Hi guys, welcome back to another one. Um, got a snowblower here. It's a uh, MTD 524, so it's a five horse and a 24 inch width two stage snowblower. About two months ago, I was on a uh, Facebook marketplace and happened to come across a snowblower and it said free. So reading down through the through it, because I thought maybe it was just junk or whatever, but garbage and didn't work, but I was halfway interested in it even then because maybe it was the motor shelled out or something, but or maybe I could get it to work so I didn't have to scoop my driveway by hand or use my dad's four-wheeler or something to plow us out. And so I was halfway interested in it, but reading through there and he said he's used it for many years, but uh, trying to snow blow his uh, driveway, it stopped, it stopped augering the uh, snow through. So he probably and he admitted there was probably something simple like a shear pin, but it was time for him to upgrade. So if somebody was interested in it, you could have it. So I called a friend of mine because at the time I, uh, I had a flat tire in my truck and I was waiting for new tires to come in because I had a, a hole in the sidewall and couldn't plug it. So I had to uh, order in tires and they weren't in yet. So I called a friend of mine, got his trailer and went up there up to Sioux City about 40 minutes, half hour away or so to uh, pick this up. And uh, so I brought it home. I started it up. It started right up. But looking here on the controls, you have one handle for your drive, one handle for your auger. Well, you'd squeeze the handle for this and it would go forward or backwards, whatever gear you had selected. But you would squeeze this and it would not it wouldn't spin so but what i realized was is that this handle was already all the way down when i before i started it and it was not springing back up so there's a little cable here that runs down to the control there it pulls it on a pulley that comes up to here and i don't know if you can see it in here yeah just barely this cable threads into a lever here, or a little rod that connects to the lever up top. Well, it was there was slack in this. So what I did after I started it up, I just pulled on the cable and it shot the snow right out the auger. So I just had to tighten this, this sleeve here. It's got a sleeve on it, it tightens up. And then there's a jam nut on top that you can lock it in place so it don't spin. But that was just loose. That was the only thing wrong with it. Tighten that up and snowboard worked great. So I was extremely happy. I mean, kind of felt bad for the guy giving away a snowblower that there was nothing wrong with. I mean, he could have sold it for a little bit of money. It's an older snowblower, but it definitely still works. So uh, we didn't, that was November, I think. I think just before Thanksgiving, uh, it came up and we had a little bit of a snowstorm through here, but. Brought it home, of course we didn't use it. We already had our stuff done. It wasn't a whole lot. We could take care of it down here. And a uh, month later or whatever, we finally got some snow around here. So I busted it out to use it and it worked great. It worked flawlessly. Um, I did notice, however, that the uh, this light here was burnt out. It's a just a little headlamp here, but it's not really a headlight so you can actually see anything. I think it's more of a safety thing so people know where you're at. I mean, they intend for you to be able to see things with it, but when you're shooting snow at the auger and it's just a snowstorm in front of you, you can't see anything. But I like to have it because we snow blow around our mailbox. We live in town. Snow blow in front of the mailbox so the mailman can get up there to deliver mail, otherwise they won't. And uh, so I like to have the light just so people can actually see me because I can't hear them coming or see them coming all the time because I work odd hours so where I might get home late after dark so it might be seven o'clock at night and be snow blowing out there and I don't want somebody coming along and not paying attention and not be able to see me. So I uh, pulled the light out of there, ch checked the wires. I had voltage coming up there but it's AC so you can't just go get any headlamp to put in there. Well I happen to have another headlamp over here, headlight. I bought this go-kart for my son at an auction. This, this uh, late summer well it was more or less more or less early winter i think maybe late fall and uh they had the headlights on it but it never actually was wired up they had them on there for looks or maybe thought about hooking them up but never did 
pulled them up, pulled one of them off there and it was an AC light. So I put it in there, but it's really dull and dim and you can be, it was almost burnt out. I think one of the, one of them on there was burnt, but I'm not sure, but it barely lights up and it might not even be the right voltage light. I just, it just says AC on it. I wasn't sure the voltage. So I uh, want to put a LED light on it, which of course is a DC light. I got a LED kit I bought for my truck. Be able to put a light bar on my truck. Be able to see back, you know, lights. I got them in the back bumper. You can see that video before. But I have a pod light, 12 volt DC light. Go to be able to put on there. But I can't run that off that AC power coming off that stator off the motor. So I have a two dollar and sixty seven cent fix for this. Ordered these on Amazon. It's a bridge rectifier. This is good for 250 volt or 200 volts and 50 amps. But it, it will work for mine. It has a 1.1 volt drop. So that's what it that's what it ta or that's what it takes to what I would call excite this or to turn the to power this on. It takes 1.1 volts. So if you have 1.2 volts in there, you're only going to have 0.1 volts. Power coming off of that is about 14 to 18 volts depending on but when you actually idle it up it's about 14 volts so the voltage drop across that will be a be about 12.8 which would be just perfect for that light because that light's actually about 12 to 18 volts so it'll uh it'll work for that you can order a you can buy a voltage what they call a voltage regulator for a lawnmower to work to put wire them on they're about 30 dollars 40 dollars um, they're kind of expensive. You can find them in the junk sometimes. But rather than doing that, I just ordered a bridge rectifier here, which all they are is four diodes where it only has less power go one way, but it's a full bridge. So it's going to take the positive and the negative off of that AC current because it's like a sine wave. So it takes both halves and make it so it'll be a consistent voltage and it'll regulate it at a perfect, they'll take the both positive and negative and come across there. And if it has a little bit of a doesn't once it doesn't peak out all the time, you can put a capacitor in there in line on the DC side for like a battery style where it will hold that voltage and it'll hold it out perfect at the voltage you need. But this should do what I need to do and we'll kind of test that out when I get it put on. But about the second time we had snow, uh, went to start this. Had it running and out there and it died on me, ran out of gas. So I filled it up with the gas and went to pull it, pull it again. And it normally starts right up on the first pull. This time it uh, did not because the pull rope broke. I don't know if it broke or if the knot came untied. I'm pretty sure it broke inside there. So I'll have to uh, pull that cover off here. Pull this cover off here and pull that out there and see if I can get it rewound and put a new put that rope back in there but so we're not I'm not sure on that but it's got electric start so it still starts I just plug it into an extension cord and it's got the press start button there and it starts right up but so I'm gonna be working on the light today be putting that changing that over and showing you how this will work be able to put that in there wire that in so I'll mount that up underneath the up underneath the handlebars here to kind of keep it out of the weather Maybe build a little box for it, but I'll probably just mount it up in there. Might even figure something out, but Bill put that in there and put the light, still mount the light in the same spot. I got the bracket and everything for it. But. So, yeah, one man's junk. He was trying to get rid of it, didn't want it anymore. He went and bought a brand new one. Didn't want to mess with this one anymore. And works flawlessly. So I've had things, I had the rope break off on me, but it still starts just fine. Takes care of my snow here. So sometimes you do get lucky. But I'll uh, take that light off there and uh, wire that bridge rectifier in and then I'll show you what it, what it looks like when you're done. All right guys, I got the uh, light all the way back in or installed now. Show you what I did here. I got the 
used the original hole that was bolted for the original light, mounted my new light there. Got the ground wire for the motor side, which is gonna be your AC current. Hooked to the back of that bolt, grounded there. On the box of this, it tells you where your pins need to be and what pin is pit, what pin is what. So I have the stator coming off the engine. It's what they basically a magneto or electric magnet there that comes up across, comes up here. You hook that to the one side of AC, and then you hook your ground to the other side of the AC and these can be reversed it does not matter as an AC alternating current so it can be on either side and then the other two are going to be your DC current and it has a positive and a negative so in theory this is going to take the power coming off of this wire and this other wire and create that go through diodes in here to where it only allows current to go one direction and turn that into DC power. I don't have this mounted at all. I'm gonna probably uh, probably just hot glue this up underneath here up top. I mean, the snowblower stays in the garage unless we're actually out snow blowing snow so it won't be exposed to the weather a lot. Just be able to mount that underneath there, but I want to make sure it's going to work. Make sure I won't have to add a uh, capacitor or anything, or capacitor for like a uh, a battery source, more or less. Just something to store some of the power to be able to hold that to the full, the high side of that 12, 12 side volts. But in theory, this should work. So, we'll uh. I'll Plug it in real quick and we'll start it up and see how it looks and see if it's gonna work. If it does not work, the light will actually be flickering on and off or dim, bright, dim, bright, dim, bright because it's not holding that voltage. The voltage is, there's too much of a voltage drop. So, not sure, not sure exactly. I didn't, I don't have a, uh, something to receive real time voltage when I plug it, when I hook up my multimeter to it and start it and start it on the AC current side, it was like I said, anywhere from like 12 to 18 volts. High side was 18 and actually the lower, the lower the RPM, the higher the voltage is on this, which doesn't quite make sense to me. Should be creating it faster, but I'm up. Uh, So we'll, uh, I got it plugged in now. I'll turn the choke on and uh, see how it works. Well, seems to work pretty good. So, two dollar and sixty-seven cent piece. Be able to change that AC current to a DC current. Be able to switch that light out. Um, seems to work pretty good. Didn't seem it like it was dimming at all or flickering at all. If you looked right at the light up close, it looked like it was a little bit of flickering, but it's just probably just vibration there. If I shined away from it on the back of the smoker here, it stayed stayed bright so I think that'll work but I'm happy with that so I, I think I'll uh, I think I'm, I will mount that and be good to go but so this is just in the garage at night but we'll see take it out it's a little too late to be able to take it outside and actually run it and uh, see if it how it actually works outside and next snowstorm maybe be able to test it out said so, but it really won't be for uh won't be to actually see because all the snow coming out you won't it'd be a snow flurry in front of you anyways you won't be able to see anything but the people on the road will be able to see me out there and know that i'm there since i won't be able to see them so but 
Thanks for watching, guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one.